you are in control of the vehicle and someone exits your vehicle while the car is in motion and you don't take the time to stop, render aid, and check on your friend. What kind of friend is that? Drunk driving is not a joke. And that, this whole situation boils down to that. She was so drunk she didn't notice her friend fell out of a car. This is the story of Mia Kanu, a lively 23-year-old college student at Tennessee State University, who was enjoying her summer break back home, spending time with family and friends. She had a cheerful personality that left a strong impression on everyone she met. Little did she know that a night out with her trusted friend would lead to her losing her life and her friend being charged with her death. As the investigation proceeded, the events that unfolded that night would shock investigators and the entire community. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Southfield, a peaceful city in Michigan, where the tragic events unfolded. Southfield, with its tranquil ambience, became the backdrop for the heartbreaking tale of Mia Kanu. Mia, at the young age of 23, was a vibrant and loving soul who brought joy to the hearts of her family, friends, and anyone she encountered. She had dreams, aspirations, and a heart full of compassion. Mia was deeply dedicated to her faith, her family, and her close-knit circle of friends. Getting tattoos, and I'm bringing you guys along the journey. I am getting, we're getting, are we getting friendship tattoos? Yes. yes. So we're getting friendship tattoos, and we're putting them on our ankles, on the inside of our ankle, right here. Bro. Yeah, but, but right now they're eating. Right now, so <laughs> we can't take a picture. <laughs> I got lotion. Okay. okay, we'll give you some lotion. Well, after he does the tattoo and puts the oil on it, then it you oh, wouldn't yeah. be, you won't right. be ashy. Her warm and kind-hearted nature radiated through every interaction. She was known for her sweet disposition and her ability to bring joy and laughter into the lives of those around her. In addition to her studies, Mia was passionate about animals and was pursuing her dream of becoming a veterinarian. Her journey had already begun as a veterinarian assistant at Richland Animal Clinic in Tennessee, where she undoubtedly made a positive impact on the lives of countless pets and their owners. I work with animals because I'm an animal science pre-vet major. Um, I want to be a vet for zoo animals, but I'm not going to bore you guys with the details of my farm life, though I might take you guys on there for a vlog one day. Mia's personality was a testament to her loving and caring nature. She was a team leader both in her volleyball activities and school endeavors, demonstrating her commitment and determination. Mia was the kind of person who could light up the room with her infectious smile and laughter, making everyone feel at ease in her presence. During summer break, Mia returned to her Southfield home for the summer, reuniting with friends. One of her friends was a 23-year-old by the name of Kentia Fern. Mia Kanu and Kentia Fern shared a friendship that blossomed during the summer break. The two, along with a group of friends, embarked on a night out, relishing the joys of summer and having a break off from school. Under the city lights and the warmth of the season, they enjoyed moments of laughter and celebration. However, the night took an unexpected and tragic turn when an argument erupted between Kentia Fern and her boyfriend. The atmosphere shifted from joy to tension, casting a shadow over the once vibrant evening. This would lead to a series of events that would leave one friend dead and the other one charged in her death, leaving both families grappling with a profound loss and the unanswered questions surrounding that fateful night. On June 2nd, in Southfield, Michigan, a tragic incident occurred involving Mia Kanu. Mia's life was tragically cut short in June under mysterious circumstances that have left her family and local authorities searching for answers. The incident occurred in suburban Detroit, Michigan, where Mia was found lying in the middle of a road in the early hours of June 2nd. The circumstances surrounding her tragic passing have raised questions, and the family remains perplexed by the events that transpired on that fateful night. Surveillance footage indicates that she either fell or was pushed from a moving vehicle and left on the road. This discovery has led investigators to consider the possibility of foul play, and the case is being treated as a potential homicide. Mia's mother is left with numerous questions about the events leading up to her daughter's death, as the timeline and details provided so far do not seem to add up. The family is desperately seeking answers and justice for Mia Kanu. The driver of the vehicle involved, someone known to Mia, is cooperating with the ongoing investigation. Southfield police have not ruled out the possibility of homicide, and they are diligently working to uncover the truth behind this tragic incident. 
Following her discovery, Mia was hospitalized and placed on life support. Despite the medical team's efforts, she tragically passed away on June 5. The nature of Mia's injuries, particularly a severe head injury, adds to the mystery surrounding her death. As the investigation unfolded, Kentia Fern, a friend of Mia Canoe, was charged with causing an accident resulting in death after Mia fell out of a car that Kentia was driving. They had been spending time together with a group of friends before the incident occurred. Police allege that Kentia, who was allegedly driving under the influence, callously continued driving after Mia's fall. During a press conference, Southfield Police Chief Elvin Barron explained that it appeared Mia may have been in the process of vomiting when she fell from the vehicle, likely due to the door being opened. The events leading up to the incident involved an argument between Kentia and her boyfriend. Mia had fallen asleep in the backseat of Kentia's Jeep during the early morning hours. At 4.29 a.m., she fell out of the vehicle. A passerby leaving a nearby apartment noticed a person on the road three minutes later and called the police. Southfield police arrived at the scene, collected evidence, and found a key fob that led them to Kentia's Jeep. The failure to stop and render aid to Mia after she fell from the moving vehicle has raised questions about the nature of their friendship. One family member commented during a press briefing, stating that drunk driving has consequences and that Kentia was so intoxicated that she didn't notice her friend falling out of the car. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald emphasized that the law mandates anyone involved in an accident to stop and immediately report it to authorities. Leaving the scene, especially when someone is seriously injured or loses their life, is considered a felony and those who do so will be held accountable. Kentia was arrested on Tuesday evening and was expected to be arraigned on the charges the following Wednesday afternoon. The canoe was found dying in the middle of Providence Drive in Southfield back in early June. This week, her own friend arrested and charged in connection with her death. 7 Action News reporter Darren Cunningham is in Southfield with the video that shows what happened that tragic night. This morning, Southfield Police Chief Elvin Barron gave a timeline of events of what happened before and after Mia Canoe's body ended up here in the middle of Providence Drive. My daughter was God-fearing. She was beautiful inside and out. Mia Canoe's loved ones and law enforcement setting the record straight about the 23-year-old veterinary student and the morning of June 3rd. Chief Barron showed this video. He says, Mia was a backseat passenger when she fell out of the vehicle. There's no evidence that suggests that Mia jumped uh, from the vehicle. What the evidence suggests is that uh, Mia may be in the process of throwing up. There was vomit on the seal of the door and there was vomit in the roadway. Alcohol was detected in Mia's blood and the alcohol uh, blood contact was a point two one. As you can see in the video, the driver, her friend, who police identify as 23-year-old Kentia Monique Fern of Detroit, kept going. You were in control of the vehicle and someone exits your vehicle while the car is in motion and you don't take the time to stop, render aid and check on your friend. What kind of friend is that? Chief Barron says instead, Fern went to the Detroit Police 5th Precinct to report her phone stolen, but still didn't say anything about Mia falling from the car. And the officer reported uh, that Ms. Fern appeared highly intoxicated. He says it wasn't until eight hours after the tragedy that Fern came to the Southfield Police Department, explaining that prior to the tragedy, Fern had gotten into an altercation with her boyfriend, who allegedly took her phone and he drove off in another vehicle. Fern attempted unsuccessfully to follow her boyfriend while Mia was asleep in the back seat. During Fern's drama, Mia fell from the vehicle. Now, Fern is charged for driving drunk and leaving the scene of the accident leaving Mia Canoe to die in the roadway. It was a passerby who found Mia in the roadway a few minutes later. Drunk driving is not a joke. And that, this whole situation boils down to that. Mia's family finds comfort in knowing she donated her organs through the gift of life. Her grandmother says she saved an infant. As for Fern, she faces up to five years in prison if convicted. The court set her bond at $3,000 personally, with several conditions attached, including not having any contact with Mia's family. During the court proceedings, it was revealed that Kentia had a bench warrant out of Detroit, related to an open intoxicant charge as a driver. The impact of Mia Canoe's loss on her family, as well as the potential she had for a bright future, has been deeply felt by those who loved her. She loved 
all animals and everything living. Mia Kanu dreamt of being a veterinarian. She was studying to be one at TSU and worked at Richland Animal Clinic. She didn't want to leave for the summer, but her mom, Bianca Van Meter, says rent was too high. She just loved the people and loved the animals. And I told her, you cannot sleep in your car. You have to come home. Mia went home to Michigan, where she started hanging out with new friends. Her mom says one girl stayed at their home a few nights. The friend made Van Meter uncomfortable, so she asked Mia for her vehicle registration if it was going to be parked in her driveway. The night that the incident happened, my daughter sent me a picture of the girl's registration. Van Meter says it was the same car Mia was in the night she was found. She was in her car. Nobody went back for my daughter. She was left in the middle of the road. Um, no one called 911. This week, her mom was there as her daughter donated her organs. Mia saved a baby and another recipient, offering care to families even in her death. The messages I'm getting from people in high school who were thinking that their life was pretty much over, and then they met my daughter. And that to me, so many stories like that. This heartbreaking situation that unfolded after a night out with friends during Mia's summer break from Tennessee State University leaves Mia's family grappling with the pain of her loss. Mia's family seeks justice for their beloved daughter, holding on to cherished memories of her kindness, laughter, and dreams. The entire community mourns the loss of a promising young soul, and the hope for answers in Mia Canoe's case continues to be a beacon for those yearning for closure. As the legal proceedings progress, friend Kentia Fern, now facing charges, could potentially spend up to five years in prison for leaving the scene, which is deemed a felony, while drunk driving charges carry a misdemeanor designation. The tragedy that befell Mia Canoe on that fateful summer night in Southfield was a sequence of events that should never have unfolded. A vibrant young woman with dreams of becoming a veterinarian, Mia's life was cut short in circumstances that no one could have predicted. The loss of Mia echoes not only as a personal tragedy for her family and friends, but also as a reminder of the fragility of life and the consequences of choices made in a moment. Could a moment of pause, a reconsideration of choices made during that night, have altered the course of events? The consequences of drunk driving and the duty to care for friends in vulnerable states are vital lessons that arise from this heartbreaking incident. The void left behind is not just a personal loss for her family, but also a loss for a world that might have benefited from Mia's passion and kindness. The family and loved ones, grappling with the aftermath of this tragedy, face the profound emotional toll of losing someone with such promise and potential. My condolences to her friends and family. May they find the strength to heal and eventually discover peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.